Uh, I'm Eric Woodstone, uh, and uh, today I'd like to give just a quick summary talk um, going over um, some of our findings and um, some of what we were able to learn uh, while touring uh, the University of Cape Coast uh, and, um, and learning about the healthcare system in Ghana uh, as well as their facilities, their resources for research and education, um, and uh, how they're able to, to deploy some of those resources. And so this was, uh, the, these um, findings, all these developments are uh, a result of a recent trip by the Global Health Initiative, uh, which is a, a, a new student-led organization uh, here at the University of Illinois. Um, we're trying to ramp up and um, increase funding to make it a more permanent fixture uh, on campus. And so we're in the middle of some exciting efforts and I'll uh, get to uh, talk about that a little bit um, toward the end of the talk. Speeding ahead here. Uh, so here's just a quick outline of the talk. I'll start out with the uh, purpose of the, the Global Health Initiative um, and the trip. Uh, then I'll uh, give you a brief snapshot of the participants on the trip, uh, go over the schedule, um, and then go through uh, a, a few of the things we were able to pick up while we were out there. Um, and then I'll uh, summarize some of the ways in which uh, we think we might be able to work with the University of Cape Coast um, in starting some collaborations uh, that, can, that can have an effect or have an impact in global health research. So the mission of the Global Health Initiative, um, and uh, forgive me, Greg, I ripped this off of the website, um, but is to uh, basically create a research community uh, here at the U of I where we can unite um, all, of the, uh, all of the academic efforts that are going on uh, that can be uh, directed toward global health research, global health applications, um, diagnostics, screening, education, uh, public health education. And we have a lot of these efforts on, going on on campus, but we don't have really any conduit to, to channel them or to, um, to, to really galvanize them to, so that multiple units on campus can work together uh, where it might uh, improve deficiency or, or delivery of, of some of these technologies or some of these approaches. Uh, we'd also like to um, increase the ability of students to participate in these efforts on a meaningful level uh, for them to increase their exposure uh, and to increase their experience uh, working with uh, global health issues. So if you're working in a lab, if you're working um, on a particular technique, uh, maybe you can see how similar techniques are applied uh, in the field. Uh, maybe you can get a feel for how your technique might be able to be applied in the field uh, later down the line. And so uh, taking all these objectives uh, in line, our, our real major objective is to create a more permanent fixture on campus in the form of something like a global health center uh, or a global health organization uh, based on campus. And then we're planning the, to achieve these objectives through uh, a, basically a, a three-pronged a, a three approach, including a, a seminar series, an international experience, which uh, this talk is, uh, to which this talk is dedicated, and a global health uh, symposium at the end of the year. So we had participants on the trip from a number of departments. Um, the sponsorship uh, from different departments varied, and we had funding from uh, several organizations on campus. So we were able to get a pretty good spread of students. Um, we, so we had several chemistry students, uh, chemistry and chemical and biomolecular engineering students, um, some neuroscience students, and uh, several bioengineering students, and several other departments as well. We were also able to have uh, several faculty members join us, which was a great experience for us because we could uh, learn from them and they were able to visit each of our uh, clinical sites and able to see basically the same things that, that we were seeing in addition to visiting uh, potential collaborators that they might be able to work with in the future. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have uh, all of these people on board. Um, and we have a, a pretty good breadth of experience. Now, a number of the, the chemistry students are interested in screening, diagnostics, and uh, pharmaceutical screening, um, and, and, and diagnostic and screening technologies in general. Uh, the, the bioengineering students on board uh, have research interests ranging from tissue engineering uh, to screening and diagnostics. 
and we have uh, veterinary uh, medicine professors interested in uh, epidemiology, uh, as well as um, computer science. Uh, a, a computer science student interested in uh, electronic health records. So we have a number of students, uh, and they were all uh, interested in, in global health in some aspect of it. So here's a, basically just a, an overview of our uh, week one schedule. Um, we started out by uh, touring the, the University of, uh, of, of Ghana Lagoon um, and uh, attended a lecture on the national health insurance policy. Um, this was to help us get a feel for how healthcare is addressed in Ghana. Um, then we uh, learned a bit about the a bit a bit about the culture um, and uh, the the local people. And uh, then toward the end of the first week, we started visiting uh, hospitals. And our first our first hospital um, was uh, or, or the first hospital where we spent the entire day was um, Cape Coast Metro Metro Hospital. Um, then uh, over the weekend, we uh, had a couple of excursion activities. Uh, we went to the uh, site of the slave trade, so that was a, a interesting history lesson. Um, and we got to go to uh, National Forest as well. Uh, then the next week, we spent uh, primarily observing uh, clinical care. Um, so each day, we'd get up. Uh, head out to a different center, a uh, different hospital, or a different uh, clinic, and uh, break down into groups. And so we started out by uh, by going to the the Cape Coast Metro Hospital, which is one of the the larger hospitals um, in the area. Uh, we then went to an urban health center, uh, and there we were able to uh, observe care on an individual level. And um, the next day, we went to the urban health centers again and uh, broke down into uh, different rotations. And then uh, finally, we were able to go on rural health visits where um, several of the students were able to uh, go out into the community, into their homes um, to, to visit with students, uh, to, to visit with patients, rather, uh, who were mm -hmm. receiving uh, supplements, vitamins, uh, and immunizations. And then finally, uh, we, we wrapped up with a, a tour of the, the University of Cape Coast uh, Medical School and uh, the hospital affiliated with the medical school. Um, and we met with the, uh, the, the Central Regional Hospital uh, Board of Directors um, and the, uh, the, the, the Dean of the, of the Medical School and uh, the, the Faculty of Biological Sciences um, to talk about um, some of the things we learned out there. and. Uh, what we're hoping to, to continue with in terms of uh, in terms of bridging and forming some sort of collaboration between uh, the University of Illinois and the University of Cape Coast. Uh, um, that the University of Cape Coast is one of the is, is one of the top ranked universities. Um, so the, the two universities that we met with, and, and we didn't spend much time with the University of Ghana, um, but Professor Bashir uh, met with the, the, uh, the, bio, the, the biomedical engineering department at the uh, University of Ghana. He gave a seminar there, and then he joined us um, for the rest of our time at uh, the University of Cape Coast. And so they do have a, a brand new uh, medical school. Their, their first class is actually just graduating uh, this year. And so we were able to, to look at some of their some of their facilities, some of the med school they're still building. Uh, so the system of healthcare in Ghana, um, we'll take a look at the, the facilities first. Uh, basically, there there are three levels of hospitals. There's a, a regional hospital, a district hospital, and a community health center. And we were able to see uh, each of these uh, throughout throughout our visits. Um, and then because uh, Funding and resources are, are limited uh, anywhere. Um, the available diagnostics and equipment differ at each facility. Now, while most facilities are, are well equipped to, to diagnose the majority of patients, uh, the treatment strategies sometimes differ uh, from one location to another. Um, because patients are, are more or less likely to, to come in um, for, for, for treatment once, but not if it requires uh, you know, too much additional effort on their part, uh, we saw a lot of um, or presumptive diagnoses going on, especially in the case of malaria. Um, so 
that's a little bit different from, uh, from, from some of the approaches taken here, uh, but they're dealing with a very different epidemiology from uh, what we might have to deal with in terms of infectious disease in the US. Uh, so basically anyone uh, visiting any of these medical facilities with, uh, with, with one or two symptoms resembling those in malaria, dizziness, fever, headache, uh, nausea, uh, would get treated with uh, anti-malarials, and then if systems persist, then labs are taken. Whereas here, we take a, a more conservative approach to um, prescription of antibiotics to, to inhibit resistance. Uh, and so they're actually starting to see uh, resistance uh, crop up, and I think that this will be an issue that uh, might, prevent, might present uh, significant challenges over the coming decades. Uh, one significant a uh, challenge we saw was a lack of redundant equipment. So several facilities we visited had uh, one uh, centrifuge or one um, safety cabinet or one incubator. And so if, if any, of these, uh, any of these high use items uh, went down, samples would have to be shipped across the country. Uh, sometimes patients are entrusted with their own samples to, to or, or patients' families are, are entrusted to deliver them to another facility. Uh, and so that's a, that's a major area that could use uh, some sort of revision or funding. And then uh, additionally, the, there's a complete lack of uh, computerization for, for records. So patients are actually uh, charged with transporting their records if they need to take their, car, their care to another uh, facility. And their healthcare records are tied to a, a, the healthcare ID. Um, and if they lose the ID, uh, that's basically their only way to get the, uh, the, their, all, all of their healthcare information. So the, the National Health Insurance Scheme, uh, or policy, uh, is uh, pretty good. So this was recently enacted, um, and basically all citizens uh, are able to uh, receive uh, free healthcare uh, for a one-time fee of uh, 25 Ghanaian CD. Uh, which comes out to about uh, $18 US. Um, and so after paying this one-time fee, uh, all citizens are issued a, um, an NIHS card, and then they bring the card with them to the clinic, and uh, that's basically very proof of insurance for them. And uh, they're able to, to gain access to a, a host of commonly diagnosed or inexpensive procedures. Now, expensive procedures like surgeries or oncology uh, or cardiological therapies are often not covered. And so any complex disease, any chronic disease uh, starts to become um, a challenge in this system uh, because it's, again, a, a limited resource system. Uh, and much like the, the health insurance at the U of I, we're trying to, um, to provide care to as many people as possible uh, while, um, while doing so on a very limited budget. And then one uh, area of note was that uh, mental health care in, in particular has uh, very limited coverage um, and very unreliable coverage. And I'll talk more about that um, in a few slides. Um, so the, the largest hospital we visited was the, the largest hospital in central region, uh, which is where we, we spent most of our time. Um, and so the hospital is aptly named Central Regional Hospital. Uh, it has a doctor-patient ratio of about 1 to 40,000, and it's the most uh, well-equipped facility uh, in, uh, in, in the area. And there, there's, another, there's another hospital uh, in, in Accra, and th they have uh, similar or, or better equipment. Um, so at the hospital, they're able to do uh, cell, cell counting. They're able to do um, typical uh, diagnostic procedures, uh, malarial diagnosis. Um, but they, they have a lack of, of sequencing equipment, so they're unable to, do, um, to, to generate uh, virus titers, uh, basically, um, at, the, at the hospital. Um, their personnel are, are well trained, but again, they have this lack of redundant equipment. Um, and so, if costs can be reduced or if uh, resources can be limited in terms of what's what's necessary, then this would result in a, a significant increase in the in the standard of care. Uh, approximately 40% of the patients, and I think this figure comes up a couple times, uh, but approximately 40% of all patients uh, seeking medical care uh, are doing so for malaria or are given a presumptive uh, malarial diagnosis. Um, so 
if there's if there's any effort that's going to impact uh, the standard of care, it's going to have um, some impact on care for malaria. And then uh, again, there are no computerized records. So uh, just walking through uh, the hospital, we were able to see uh, stacks of records. Um, they're running out of room for, for these paper records. And so some sort of uh, electronic healthcare record system would be would be great, uh, but somebody's got to pay for it. So, sure. sure. So, uh, this, uh, is there a preventive uh, healthcare? Did you see there because with this forty percent patients treated for malaria, is a preventive component to it? And did you see any of that? In so they have um, they they have mosquito nets available uh, for their uh, for their patients, um, but. When we went out and talked to uh, talked to the majority of patients, uh, or well, I mean, we our our N is small, uh, but we saw that they they had uh, supplies of mosquito nets even down to the to the rural health centers, uh, but the, the the patients really weren't uh, weren't using them, um, and so they have posters all over the clinic, uh, and all over the hospitals, all over uh, the, the all levels of healthcare, all all three tiers of health facilities. Uh, basically, uh, preaching that you should use a mosquito net, that, that it shouldn't be just a just a net, but a but an insecticide treated net, uh, and there's still uh, relatively poor compliance. Um, so I think this is due to uh, a breakdown in two places. I think that uh, the the literacy uh, in in terms of uh, English literacy is not quite as high uh, as as. As, as maybe it needs to be uh, to, to learn about a, a, a disease uh, or a, a parasitic disease and, and, and how to fight it. Um, I think that while people can learn that, uh, that a net will stop, the, will stop uh, transfer of the disease, um, that really knowing how it works will, ensure, will help to ensure compliance. Um, and so uh, we actually had a, a couple of people, uh, Barry Pittendrig and uh, Julia um, Bella Bravo, who are uh, here on campus, and uh, they're part of Scientific Animations Without Borders, and so they're planning on deploying a, a, a on, on trying to deploy a series of videos uh, narrated in the local dialect Fonte um, to educate the, the people for for use of uh, anti-malarial nets and and uh, how to how to take the anti-malarial medications. Um, so we're hoping that might be a the, an area where they can where they can exert some influence. Um, educational efforts, on the other hand, seem to be pretty good. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of Planned Parenthood. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, Planned Parenthood influence in the community, and the community seems to take a pretty liberal uh, approach to uh, to family planning. So we were able to see um, so we were able to see family planning uh, posters like. Uh, like like this one on the top right, um, all over uh, a number of the hospitals, um, and so the the next the the next type of hospital we visited was a um, was a, a, a metro hospital. I think this that's a typo. It's actually just uh, the Cape Coast Metro Hospital. Um, so with a doctor patient ratio of uh, about thirty thousand, this used to be the um, the regional hospital. And so now it's uh, now it serves as a hospital that uh, has nearly the same standard of, of care and uh, resources. Uh, it also was a, a, a national center for uh, tuberculosis research. Um, so they have uh, WHO and CDC certified uh, laboratory technicians uh, and and, re and facilities. Uh, but again, they're subject to this uh, lack of redundant equipment. Um, and then again, uh, about 40% of patients are being are being treated for malaria. So then, uh, the the next uh, tier of healthcare down, uh, we went to. A, so this is just one of the of, of a couple of the urban health centers we visited. Uh, so the one that the, the the one that we visited at EWM um, had three exam rooms, uh, one physician, and uh, three medical officers uh, on duty, and then uh, they were responsible for primary healthcare for about thirty thousand uh, people. And uh, medical officers were actually performing the majority of diagnoses, care, uh, and treatment for a number of prescriptions. 
um, uh, for a, a number of conditions, uh, and they and they were actually uh, writing prescriptions for their patients. Um, so one thing that we saw, uh, and this was across multiple locations, was presumptive diagnosis of malaria. Um, and so I was talking about this earlier, but. Uh, basically, they prescribed a full panel of antimalarials for any patient that presented with fever, nausea, uh, basically any any GI or uh, any GI symptoms or fever, and you were given antimalarials. And so, while this is an this may serve as an effective short-term strategy, uh, over the long term, it will definitely uh, select for more resistant strains of, of malaria and uh, strains of malaria that will be uh, harder to. Um, harder to eliminate. So um, the next hospital we went to was the University of Cape Coast Hospital. Um, and so this is a newer facility. Uh, and because it's uh, associated with the med school, uh, the doctor-patient ratio is a, a, a little bit lower. Um, it has a, a layout and facilities similar to the Metro Hospital. Um, they Again, they diagnose malaria on uh, on site, and again, it accounts for about 40% of the of the patients seen. Um, and again, we we talk to these guys about uh, what they're seeing and, and what seems to be a problem, and resistance seems to be uh, seems to be an issue. So then, uh, finally, we were able to get to the the rural clinic visits, uh, and we were able to go around each uh, community with uh, social health activists and uh, community health workers. Um, and basically visit individual families. And this was something that I found particularly uh, compelling uh, because healthcare is, is taken very seriously. And so, they, and, and so these, these, these workers are going into communities and, and they have the resources to, to educate the public. Um, it's just that uh, compliance as far as you know, mosquito nets or, or immunizations or vaccination is still somehow a problem. And so that to me indicates that uh, education is a is a primary barrier uh, for for delivery of these of these basic um, healthcare necessities, uh, and so without immunization, without uh, retinol, vitamin A, um, you know, infants infants can uh, frequently become blind, uh, are susceptible to a number of diseases that are that are really solved problems uh, in the majority of the developing world. So if we can educate people more effectively as to how these um, how these treatments work, how these uh, prophylactic mechanisms work, uh, I think we can we can have a drastic uh, impact on, on outcomes uh, throughout the country. Um, so it was impressive to, to us that uh, many of the community workers knew each, uh, each family member by name. Uh, there's free health care access for all these basic facilities, uh, and much of it is uh, due to support from the USAID. Uh, as well as uh, the uh, as well as UN efforts and the WHO, and then uh, one thing which was which seemed pretty unique was that uh, mothers actually have uh, booklets for each of their kids, um, and many times they're just kept in a, uh, in a in a plastic bag somewhere in the house uh, to to store records of immunizations, vitamins, uh, and supplements given to their kids. And so again, while this is a good effort, uh, there needs to be some sort of uh, record storage. Uh, to, to really secure those records, because if the if the kid moves, if the um, if the family isn't in a great situation, then um, those records might become compromised somehow. Uh, and so the the next thing I'd like to discuss is uh, mental health care in Ghana. Uh, so a few of us were able to visit um, one of the uh, psychiatric hospitals. So there are only um, ten. Uh, clinical uh, psychologists at this hospital, and there's only one psychiatrist, only one uh, allopathically trained uh, MD um, at, the, at, at the hospital. Um, and so they have, the, the hospital has 500 beds, about 300 of them were, um, were being served at the time uh, that we visited, so, and they were operating at about 80% capacity, um, so a little less than that. And a uh, major problem they have is uh, an unreliable supply of uh, antipsychotics and seizure medications. Um, so because their, because their drug supply is uh, due to uh, international aid efforts, the, the supplies of varying drugs will fluctuate uh, from year to year or, or sometimes from month to month. Uh, that results in having to get patients off of one medication and onto another, uh, which if you're uh, being treated for, for something where it takes a few weeks to adjust to, to a medication, potentially, uh, that can drastically affect your care. Uh, so that was uh, kind of alarming. And then 
the, uh, the, the top diagnoses uh, at, the, at the health center include uh, seizure disorder or epilepsy, uh, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, uh, and depression. So, so very common ailments. Uh, but in, in Ghana, uh, as, as was the case here, as was the case uh, throughout the, the Western world um, up until relatively recently, uh, there's a huge stigma associated with uh, mental health care. And so people that, are, that, that need to seek this care uh, are sometimes abandoned by their families at the, uh, at, at, at the, at the hospital. Uh, sometimes the family drops them off and, and gives an incorrect address uh, or an incorrect uh, contact information so that, they're, uh, so that they can leave their, uh, their, this, this person there uh, to be taken care of. And, uh, and, and so you'll also have people coming from across the country to avoid seeing people they know um, at, the, at the hospital. Uh, and so people will drive hours or, or take days away um, from, their, from their family for work or, or, or for work uh, to, to, to seek treatment and care. Uh, and so they're, they're currently working against this. There's a, there's a distributed mental health care uh, plan in the works. Um, but it hasn't passed legislation yet, so they're still working on it. Um, they also have extremely limited resources for addiction. Uh, they basically don't have any way to, to pay for it. Uh, and so the, 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 the treatment center is, is nice and well equipped, uh, but it costs apparently, uh, it costs approximately rather, uh, Fifteen hundred dollars uh, for a for a twelve step program that lasts a couple months, and so while fifteen hundred dollars seems relatively modest for for a similarly equipped program in the U.S., uh, the average income for Ghanaians is uh, much much lower, uh, and so basically only the you know only the the, the top uh, percentile uh, of, of of income can can really seek that kind of can seek that kind of care. Um, and then finally, one thing that we noticed was a was the possibility of bias to, to funding organizations. So uh, there were various uh, religious affiliates or, or churches, and then corporations uh, also had uh, sponsorship and, and information actually being displayed at the at the hospital, which was um, which was a little uh, disconcerting. And so uh, another area uh, where we think we could potentially do some interesting work uh, is in herbal medicine. Um, and so they are uh, the, at, the, at the University of Cape Coast uh, and the, the Metro uh, Health Center, there's a, there's a new center for uh, herbal medicine. Um, and so they're, they, they've just implemented a, a degree program where people can learn to become uh, herbal medicine uh, practitioners. And then uh, people are able to, to secure um, herbal or traditional remedies uh, in, in local markets. Um, and so one problem that uh, they foresee is that uh, some of these treatments aren't really uh, effectively researched or, um, or characterized. And so dealing with the side effects, dealing with uh, problems that might arise uh, in, in the case of use of some of these treatments is becoming a, a problem. Uh, one problem that, that they're researching in particular uh, is uh, treatments that are designed to induce abortions. Um, and so they've seen uh, elevated uh, maternal mortality with use of some of these treatments, but they don't know uh, the mechanisms by which any of them work. Uh, and so they're, they're trying to do some, uh, some preliminary animal studies now at the University of Cape Coast, uh, but they don't really have the resources to identify uh, individual uh, components, or chemicals, or compounds uh, in these in these preparations, in these herbal preparations uh, that are responsible for these uh, physiologic effects, uh, and so that's one area where I think uh, the the U of I could could really lend um, some some expertise in terms of uh, identifying those those active compounds and maybe modifying them to become safe or uh, or inhibiting them uh, in in the case that they're uh, just absolutely bad, um, and so. I guess I got a little ahead of myself, um, but the the research at the University of Cape Coast um, is uh, there's there's some good and some bad. Um, the good is that uh, the professors seem to be really interested and motivated uh, to, to to meet with us and work with us um, and gain access to, to any resources or personnel we might be able to um, to share uh, between the two campuses. Um, and and reproductive health is a is a marked area of focus. Uh, because of these, because of these herbal treatments, sometimes, um, 
and then researching mechanisms of, of herbal remedies in general uh, seems to be an area an area of interest. Uh, now, some of the limitations are that uh, lab equipment uh, facilities are limited to uh, to, to basic uh, molecular biology lab uh, facilities. Uh, so. All the toys that we have here cost a lot of money, uh, and it's got to come from somewhere. So I think that a relationship uh, based around maybe some of the differences in equipment, uh, the differences in facilities between the U of I and the University of Cape Coast uh, might really uh, be able to uh, work in our favor, uh, because they also have uh, plants and vegetation uh, trees that are that are unique to Cape Coast. And so as far as pharmaceutical screening, drug screening, or, or researching some of these uh, herbal remedies, uh, we could really uh, stand to, to benefit from working together. Um, and, and so doing mechanistic studies of how some of these treatments work, um, I think could be uh, a potential area for collaboration. Um, so additional areas that uh, we're pursuing in terms of uh, how, to, how the two universities can work together include uh, clinical clerkships uh, with the Colleges of Veterinary Medicine uh, as well as the, the College of Medicine uh, here at the U of I. Um, they're doing a lot of work uh, with malarial diagnosis, and, but the, the research that they're doing at the, at the university seems to be centered around um, learning about uh, malarial resistance. And so I think that that's another area where we have uh, great expertise in, in genomics, um, and we could we could really do some some interesting work together uh, on uh, basically characterizing these resistant strains of malaria and uh, maybe uh, developing treatments or um, or uh, therapies directed against them. Then there are other parasites, uh, so. There are lots of lots of worms, um, lots of um, sanitation uh, issue induced uh, GI problems. Uh, so that's another one of the, the main cases, the main types of cases seen at most of the medical facilities. And so there's a there, there's a um, dedication to researching mechanisms of parasitic mm -hmm. resistance, um, and then uh, therapies that might be directed against those uh, those parasites. Uh, mental health care uh, and uh, basically establishing standards of care, uh, establishing a distributed uh, model of mental health care, uh, as well as researching the stigma associated with, the, with, with mental health um, issues could be a potential area of research. Um, and then social health, uh, the, the, basically the importance of um, the, the family as a unit, the importance of um, multiple people uh, raising, raising these kids, uh, educating each other. Um, I think that that uh, is, is also an area where we could stand to benefit um, from collaboration. And then uh, personally, um, point of care diagnostics uh, seems to be a, uh, an area of interest. So if we can design more effective tools to, to diagnose malaria, um, then they won't need possibly as many resources to diagnose malaria, and maybe they can ded rededicate their staff uh, to, to to trying to find um, some of these some of these cases that are currently being missed. Um, and then also tuberculosis, um, it remains an issue, uh, mainly because uh, the the drugs are are costly um, and uh, education. Uh, about tuberculosis is uh, is lagging, uh, and so similar to mental health, uh, there's a there's a stigma f against people with tuberculosis. So if they if if it's found out that you have it, uh, you become ostracized. You're not really able to lean on uh, on your um, on your friends, on your family as much as as much as you might be able to here. Um, and then uh, HIV uh, is is also a uh, an area of um, pronounced focus uh, because of its increased incidence in this region. And I think, oh yeah. So uh, we've made several uh, points of contact, um, including the, 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 a few of the deans and directors of uh, several of the schools. Um, we have uh, direct contact um, with a number of these uh, personnel as well as uh, a number of others. And we're hoping to um, develop a, a, a comprehensive list uh, that we hope to use in um, forming our forming a, a, a long-term partnership 
um, between our university uh, and the University of Cape Coast. Um, and so we're currently seeking uh, long-term funding uh, to support collaborative uh, research efforts. Um, and ideally, we'd like to uh, facilitate some sort of um, annual or, or several annual visits uh, between campuses. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, to basically to present a more in-depth uh, look at uh, our findings and um, maybe some of what we'll do in the future, uh, we're planning a global health symposium. Um, and then uh, more information about all of this uh, is available at globalhealth.illinois.edu. Um, and so I encourage you to visit the website. We have uh, a number of students, a number of participants on the trip that uh, have contributed their perspectives, um, their um, basically uh, little essays uh, about uh, their experience on the trip and what they were able to see, what, how that uh, basically influenced their views on, on some things they had going into the trip. Uh, and so uh, a lot of what people wrote is, is very, uh, very interesting. And so with that, if, uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Uh, if everyone wants to run out and grab pizza, I can't blame you. Okay, any other comments, questions? Very interesting talk. How many of you went uh, to the strip here? <laughs> Greg is the only one, I think. I thought there were several others. Newcomers, anybody looking for pizza? Then let's give him a hand.